In this video, I'm checking out the Tiki Pro full color tube lights and oh dear God, this is a mixed review. With wireless connectivity and control of multiple units via the app, these lights have huge potential. I wanted to see what they can do, check out the build quality, the user experience and user interface of the app. And of course, I'll have some really balanced pros and cons. If you're new around here, I'm Harv, and I have lots of videos about videography and audio gear reviews and tutorials on my channel, so consider subscribing if you haven't already. I always get straight to the good stuff in these reviews. As ever with these videos, I've timestamped everything so you can just skip to the bit you want, and this video is not brought to you by any sponsor or company except for maybe my Patreon backers. And the idea with that is it's a non-profit thing. Any funds from Patreon, I put back into the channel to buy gear and then I give the gear away to my backers. If that's of interest and these videos help you, consider becoming a backer. It's just the cost of a cup of coffee and plus you can win some cool stuff. So back on with the video. What are these tiki lights? Well, firstly, and just to get this out of the way, it really is pronounced tiki and not teke. I, I would have thought it was teke, but uh, no, no. And this was actually a Kickstarter campaign, which I backed. I, I was a little wary, as I always am with these Kickstarter campaigns. Backing tech products on Kickstarter, I think can sometimes be dodgy, but with this product, I thought as in, as they're not exactly kind of uh, breaking new ground, it was probably a, a safe bet. And I wanted some lights that would help me to, to do new things, to enable me to shoot in different ways and, and have different uh, color lighting setups. And, um, and as it happens, my buddy, John Fulton from Camera Gear Lust on Instagram recommended these and the rest was history. And by the way, if you don't follow him, what are we doing? You should. Anyway, next onto features, and I went for the Pro version, which are 40 inches long. I actually went for five of the Pro version. And Tiki also make a, a mini version, which is uh, half the length, so that's kind of handy. They're full color, as I mentioned, and they have 60 pixels per light. So as you can imagine, they are capable of some fairly complex patterns, and that obviously you access through the app, but more on that in a bit. Tiki say these have color accuracy of better than 88 CRI. And if you're not familiar, CRI is a, a score that's given to lights uh, based on the way that the human eye sees color. And you know, it's out of 100. Usually if you're, if you're buying something like uh, a, an LED light, that's going to be your key light, like I've got up here, I've got the Aperture 600D. You're gonna want something with very high accuracy because likely is you're gonna be using it to light skin tones. And the last thing you want is is really inaccurate color coming uh, you know, off that, uh, off that light. I don't think that CRI really matters that much with these lights because I don't think that people are gonna be using them at, in a kind of key fill, you know, standard lighting setup. Um, like you would with standard lights. As you can see from this example, um, they kind of just look a bit strange. Next onto build quality, and they're a mix of aluminium and plastic, and each tube weighs 750 grams. I got them with these stands, which are made of metal, and just screw in, unfold them, and then you can stand them up vertically. I use these all the time. In terms of sturdiness, they feel pretty good. And I can already sense what some of you are thinking. Can I use it as a lightsaber? And no, no, I definitely don't recommend you do that. There's also a ton of other mounting options. You can magnetically mount them to things using these magnetic attachments. And there's also a movable quarter 20 part. So the sky's the limit. Obviously I wanted to test this. So I went around the house just attaching it to anything metal that I could find. And yeah, it worked pretty well. You charge the units via USB-C and you won't necessarily get this included. So do check that. And it only has one button, the on off button. That's all you need. Next onto the user interface of the app and then the overall user experience of using this product. And to, to, to briefly sum up, I have quite mixed feelings. When you have them fully linked and working, they are great to use, but getting to that point can be fiddly and a little frustrating at times. I found that at the time of filming, the app was the weaker part of the system and you can't really use them to their fullest unless you are using the app. Um, the other thing I noticed was the connectivity side of things was also quite tricky. You connect using DMX slash Wi-Fi to connect them together, 
And they're obviously perfect if you're using them in just one location, like a home studio, because you don't have to go through the process of linking them every time you use them. Unlike when you turn up at a new location where you have to start linking them via the local Wi-Fi network. I recently had the opportunity to do this as I've just moved house. So I opened up the Tiki app, selected Pro of course, clicked on the setup guide in the top left hand corner and then went into network update. That way I can, you know, I can tell the app and my devices that they're going to be on a new Wi-Fi network. Now you're probably thinking that's amazing. However, it doesn't really work that well. Firstly, it detects four units. There are five. And then this section is on 3000 times speed and just note the clock counting up. I waited for six whole minutes to see what would happen and nothing. I had to exit the app feeling a little annoyed. In the end, I had to abandon that idea and I had to go into the Bluetooth configuration, which had found all five of my Tiki units. And then I had to go in individually and type in my Wi-Fi name and then password for each one, which is pretty annoying. This was a fairly glitchy process and it ended up taking me about 45 minutes. One thing that I would advise is to actually number them physically write on them with a, a liquid paper pen. We call it Tipex in the UK. And that way you'll know which one's which on the app and in the real world. And you can also get them lined up so that the patterns flow as they should. I have found the battery life to be decent, but not perfect. Tiki say you get 12 hours of runtime. And um, whilst I haven't tested that, you know, for all 12 hours, I have found that just uh, one job that I went on one of them for some reason, even though it, it had a full charge, apparently just just stopped and it wouldn't turn back on. And I don't know if that's a battery life thing. Don't know. You get lots of presets that are mostly great. I particularly like the stage show effects as these really show off the ability to have patterns flowing across multiple lights. There are a few quirks with the presets, like if you select pulse single color and then try and set it to anything but well, red, it doesn't, and that's strange. But tell you what, let me show you a few more clips of what this actually looks like in use. So sticking with this shot of this guitar, it gives me a good excuse to show you some of the stage show effects. And they are all pretty spectacular. It's kind of hard to go wrong. One thing to bear in mind though, in this shot, I've got all of the lights set to the same universe. So essentially they're just, you know, all doing the same thing. Depending on the effect, you might want to set them all to individual universes so that patterns can flow from light to light, but that's up to you. Moving on, and we have a really nice array of filmmaker effects as well. This lightning is really nice, but of course, bear in mind, this is all customizable. You can change the rate and intensity, all of that kind of stuff. Police lights, pretty useful. And of course they also have a huge array of different color temperatures that you can choose. And this is really useful for accent lighting in a scene. I also really like the moods category. There's some super cool effects available in this section. In particular, I really like the particle universe and particle expansion. It goes without saying these look even better when they're not all set to the same universe. Onto the question of value and at full price, I would say it's a little more difficult to say yes. These are good value, but Tiki often run, you know, multi buys and offers. So if you can get one of those, then definitely I, I, I think it's pretty amazing value. As for alternatives, and there are a few, but the first place I always look is with Aperture and they do some from their cheaper Amaran range and then some from the full fat Aperture range. This is the Amaran PT4C. It's four foot full color. It's likely not to be made quite as well as the Aperture versions, but you can see the price here. And then we have the Aperture Infinibar range and I've picked the biggest one, which is the PB12. I'm sure these are gonna be really lovely to use, lovely quality, but again, you can see 
see the price? I mean, I paid just a little more than this and I got five of the Tiki lights. They do bundles, of course, but as you can see from the price, it really does jump quite high. But you know, this is for eight lights, so that's pretty good. And it looks like you get all of the accessories with it, including that amazing case where you can charge all of them simultaneously. How cool is that? One thing I'll say though, is when looking into all of these alternatives, it really drives home just how good value these Tiki lights are. For example, right now at the time of filming, you can get a bundle of eight Tiki lights for less than a quarter of the Aperture equivalent. Now I get that these are a touch shorter than the Aperture version, and I also get that a big draw for Aperture users is their Sidus link, but I still think these are undeniably good value. Next on to the pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So starting with the pros, and I love the light quality from this. I don't care that it says 88 CRI or better. I think that's nonsense, and I love the light you get from these. I really think these are decent value. It was a while ago that I bought these, so I can't remember the exact price. I bought them with the little tripod feet, power cables, and then I added a bag afterwards, because yeah, I didn't think about storage or traveling with them. You get lots of effects. I think these will cover most shooting situations. There are also lots of applications that you can use these with. They unlock so many possibilities with your shooting. Overall, it's a really well thought out product. That's perhaps an app update away from being really great. Finally, don't underestimate the fun factor of these. I guarantee when you get these, you set them up and start shooting with them, it'll have you grinning. And onto the cons, yes, these are a little niche. You can't use them as key lights, really. So we're looking at more kind of specialist applications. Connectivity can be fiddly, and it's not the most practical when you arrive at a new location. The setup, for me anyway, wasn't a smooth process. I did have to check up the setup guides on Tiki's website. I review a lot of products, and it's not often that I say that. The UI of the app isn't perfect, and there are quirks with some of the presets. Once or twice since getting these, I found the battery life to be a little unpredictable. Finally, there is no option, as far as I know, to power slash charge these whilst in use, something that I would find really helpful. Finally, to my opinion, and I think what we have here is a relatively new company with a great product in principle that just have a few growing pains. The really encouraging part of that is that the biggest issues with this product are software based. And as we've seen countless times before, I mean, to name just two, you know, uh, Sony and uh, Fuji, big leaps in a product's development can happen just from a firmware update. So I'm confident that Tiki are committed to this and um, I, d I don't think it's um, any of this the things I've mentioned are uh, a deal breaker. Aside from that side of it, I've really enjoyed using these so far. They're just so cool to use. And actually it's funny when I first got these and set them up, my partner said to me, who, who she's, she's not into um, video, video gear at all. She said to me, and I quote, that's the coolest video thing you've ever bought. And um, so there you go. So at the very least, these will impress your partner. So buy this if you don't currently own full RGB lights. I get that they're a little niche, but think of the possibilities, particularly if you film things like music videos, which I do. Don't buy this if you have zero patience. There's a little bit of setup learning to do, um, and that's fine. But um, if you have no patience, I just no. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. Please let me know, do you own these? What do you think? How? What's your experience of owning them being like? Is it similar to mine? Let me know, I'll be down in the comments section below. I've now made over 300 of these videos about videography and audio, of which the algorithm has selected this video for you to watch next, and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Mm -hmm.